Uh, so in this video we're continuing on with statistics. Uh, this particular one, this particular video deals with something called a stem and leaf plot. Now, uh, quickly look at the question, uh, then we'll have a talk and then we'll do the question itself. Uh, the marks out of 50 obtained by 16 students in a maths test are as follows. And you've got all these uh, scores, so 43 out of 50, 24 out of 50, etc. We're going to represent this information on a stem and leaf plot. Now right now, the um, the numbers here are what we call data. Now data is just the the numbers that have been collected. Um, you can collect any sort of data, but it's collected and it's called it's sometimes called raw data. Now by looking at those numbers, it's very difficult to see how this class went. What we need to do is represent it in some way, either with a graph or a table or something that makes sense. And when we represent it in that way, we're turning our data into information and so anytime you sort of you take data and turn it into a graph a table or something that's easier to read and easier to understand you create information something that's easier to read okay so the way that a stem and leaf plot works uh, you've got a, a line down the middle here's your stem here's your leaf now basically you're going to break this up into tens Okay, so uh, all of the scores under 10, first of all. Now, there's only one score under 10, and that's 7. Now, we're going to represent that by a 0 in the stem. Now, the 0, the stem, if you like, in this particular instance, represents the 10s column, and the leaf represents the 1s column. Okay, so we're going to put a 0 in the 10s column, and then the number 7 in the ones column. So zero stroke seven, that represents the number seven. Now let's deal with the teens. 19, 11, 14, 17, 14, 19. Okay, so um, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six numbers in the teens. Now when we write these down, we write them like this. We write them in order first of all, so 11 is going to be our first one. A 1 in the tens column and a 1 in the ones column. So that stands for 1, 1, 11. Now there's two 14s. There's a 14 here and a 14 here. So I go one more along. Now that's 1, that's a 10 plus 4, that's 14. There's also two 14, so I need to draw that a second time. Okay, so that's the 14 done, this 14 done, the 11 done. I need to do the 17 next. You can see I'm doing these in order. And then the two 19s, 19, 19. Now, uh, be careful here, a couple of things. Uh, when you're putting the numbers in, they need to be directly underneath each other. And when you're writing your numbers, they should be evenly spaced. Okay, don't try to like bunch them up or anything like that. Even spaces between each number. Okay, let's deal with the 20s. So we've got a 24, a 29, a 25, a 27, a 29. Okay, just be really, really careful when you're doing these. Uh, look for the lowest number. 24 is the lowest number. 24, followed by 25, followed by, so 24, 25, 27, 29, and there's another 29, so there's two 29s. Now you can see again, I'm evenly spacing these, and I'm putting them directly underneath each other. We, you'll see why we do that in a minute. Okay, continuing on, we need to look for our 30s now. Okay, so there's a 30 here, 32, and 30 there, 39. So again, do them in order, 32, 39, and then deal with our 40s. There's a 43 here, and a 49 over here. Okay, uh, the last thing I need to do with my stem and leaf plot is create the key. Very, very important that you create a key. If you don't create a key, 
you really haven't done your stem and leaf correctly. This key just tells you what all this stem and leaf stuff means. So I'll pick a number, uh, say the number 32. You can pick any number in the list, doesn't matter what, and just draw it 3 with a line 2. So then it says that the number 3 line 2 is equal to 32. Uh, we'll see with some other ones that we do uh, that 3 line 2 might also be equal to 320 or some other different number. So you just need to make sure that you put the key in there so people know uh, what the magnitude of these numbers are. Finally, the last thing I'll say about this, now uh, that's a completed stem and leaf plot. It's finished now. You don't have to do what I'm going to do next. I just wanted to show you something. What we've done is take this data and turn it into information. You can actually see that a stem and leaf plot is kind of like, I'll try to draw some straight lines here. The stem and leaf plot is actually kind of like a column graph. If you turn your head uh, 90 degrees to the right, you'll see that we've got these columns here. Now again, you, the, you're not putting these columns in, this is just something to show you. So if you turn your head right to 90 degrees right now, you can see that it's just like a histogram or a column graph. You can see that the most um, likely score out of 50 seem to be in the teens, somewhere between 11 and 19. The least common one was uh, like the, the 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 numbers one to ten. That was only here. The second most common was in the twos, uh, in the twenties, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-nine, twenty-nine. Uh, so a stem and leaf plot takes that raw data, like I was talking about, takes that raw data. Whoops, takes that raw data and turns it into information, something you can actually understand. Okay, that's a stem and leaf plot and how to draw one.